Good morning, it's Jessie Dujari from Healing Pathwalkers. It's morning oasis time, 10 a.m. on the 28th of December. Today is the new moon, um, our very first new moon of the year. Uh, let's see what else is today. We're close to the new year. This is a solstice new moon, by the way. Um, today is one of those days for me. Uh, I had a pretty um, big kind of upset yesterday and <clears throat> I'm very low energy today um, and feeling uh, kind of that impact and, and releasing a lot of stuff so today is not one of those big shiny smiley days for me today is one of those kind of um, a vul more vulnerable day and you know on that note I'm just gonna add in here that one of the reasons I'm doing this on a daily basis is this is what living transparently looks like. Oh, good morning, Amber. So nice to have you here. Hi. Um, this is living transparently. So, you know, when we have hard days, a lot of times people look at healers or look at people who work in this field and think they must have their life all together. They must have it all together. They must know something more. Things must be easier for them. And you know, that's just not true. We're all human. We're all here in this human condition. We're all learning and growing. And um, though there's many aspects of my life that I feel are quite together, there are also aspects that I work on and I struggle with. So today, my eyes are a bit puffy. <laughs> I'm a little tired, I'm a little low. I'm honoring that and, and speaking that to you guys because many of you are empathic and we probably just picked that right up anyway. So, um, we had one request for a personal reading and then one request for kind of a collective reading. So I thought I would do those. Oh, good morning, Sarah. How is Florida? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome, by the way. You guys really helped me stay focused. This, um, this morning show is, is as much for me as it is for you guys because, you know, every morning when I, I need to show up here, that reminds me I have to show up for myself too, right? And that um, that I have to let myself be where I am. But sometimes there's more to our lives than where we're at. There's a lot more going on. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. And, um, you know, over my life, I've, uh, I've, I've experienced a lot of trauma. You know, I come from a pretty traumatic background. I've also experienced a lot of love. Um, I love you too. <laughs> Sarah, thank you. Um, and, and that, you know, that's, that gives you that, um, mix, right? So there's a lot I still have to process from my childhood, from my youth, from my history, from my other lifetimes. Right now, what we're really going through, uh, I believe is this collective purging of all of these wounds of separation, all of these wounds that make us feel like I am alone, nobody understands me, nobody loves me, nobody accepts me. We all hold those wounds, all of us, even the most together of us hold that in the dark parts, parts of us. <clears throat> we just usually <clears throat> are hiding it with each other. And so my decision has always been and will continue to be to be transparent about both my highs and my lows. So today you get to see me show up in a little bit of a low um, that seems like it's kind of coming back up. And I hope that if you're in that space also that you can just feel like, hey, you got some company there, <laughs> right there with you in those trenches. See my puffy eyes? <laughs> okay, so Andrea requested a card pull, and Alex requested a year in review pull because I offered that for the psychic fair I went to last night, which was very slow, surprising. Slowest time that we've had at a fair, but I did take my ukulele, which made it very fun. So <clears throat> we're going to pull a card for Andrea. Oh. Oh, goodness. And what were we just talking about? <clears throat> so this one's for all of us. Hi, Alex. This is Andrea's card pull. So this is a major arcana. This one is justice. So whenever we get a major arcana card, when we get the majors, these are essentially if you took 
the human condition, you know, like all the processes that we have to go through. <laughs> well, Alex, you know, I, I love that you don't care <laughs> about what other people think about you. I think that's beautiful and perfect. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm grateful <laughs> that that's one thing that you can hold for us and send more of that out, please. Could you just imagine yourself like a great big transmitter sending that vibration out to all of us? We all need a little bit more of that. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. The braids are because, as I said, crusty morning, slow start, braids were like, a way to tame the hair <laughs> but I love braids I wear them a lot actually but not the double I haven't been doing the double lately anyway justice okay so good morning Shauna good morning justice is um, is all about how do we weigh something right how do we balance out right the scales of justice how do we balance the complaint against the crime right the the victim against the criminal or the perpetrator or whatever it is right but ultimately how do we balance these two sides andrea this is your card pull so with justice we tend to feel like we've been cut in some way right that we've been wounded and the justice process and this is one of the reasons in this card, the scales are surrounded by butterflies, is somehow going to transform the wounded state into a state of empowerment. That's the whole point of justice. So right now is the time to take our wounded states, the pieces that we feel we are, that are, have been unjust, and allow them to be free and transform into something that's lighter than the scales entirely. Justice is also about determining how much weight do we give to any particular one issue, reminding us to stay in balance. So this is a major arcana. So this is kind of one of those collective things that you're working on, and it's a, it's a life lesson. This is one of those have to learn this for your life kind of lessons. And I think justice is in the air. Not only is it the 11th card, one one ah, perfect that's awesome alex we need it we all need it especially me right now <laughs> so um yeah justice is is i think it's going to be one of those ones that all of us uh really identify and need so alex requested a year in review card poll like what kind of year would it be now i thought let me think about it for just one second while i shuffle I thought it would be fun, and I am going to do it. I just needed to check in with my guidance a little bit. To do a spread that's a year spread. Now, I'm going to, the camera view will get a little wonky, but first I'm going to lay it out really quickly, and then I'm going to show you guys the cards, and we will go that way, okay? So let me lay it out. I have room. And I'll turn my light on so we can see. So, and you guys will see a little more of my house, I guess, my desk. All right, so what I'm going to do is change the view. And let me bring this over here. All right, so here's our year. This is January. This is the Three of Wands. It looks like January is going to be a time of looking at what it is that blocks us from having that long range view, right? This is a woman who is standing on, it's kind of hard to see because it's, it's upside down. She's standing on the this ledge, this little piece of land, looking out over a long valley, and she's on a journey. And her journey is to the other side of that valley. So she's scoping out the view. It's inverted. So we're going to be looking at what blocks us from really getting that view. It looks like February. <clears throat> February is going to be working on 
parts of ourselves that feel like we are rejected, that we're outside of the community. You know, in this image, it's the inside the church is warm, glowing light, it's beautiful, and this person is sitting out here feeling all alone. But what she is not receiving is the curling of these vines around her and this transformational butterfly coming to her. This is a cocoon space and she's supported by much more than just that. So then we come here to, let's see, January, February, March. <laughs> you guys are going to see me do that a lot because I lose track. Time is so meaningless to me. <laughs> okay, so we're in March. The Five of Cups. This deck is called the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie Pullman. Here's, it's honestly, it's my favorite deck. I use it the most. Um, and I'll show you the book so you can kind of see. Shadowscapes, Stephanie Pullman and Barbara Moore. Stephanie Pull, uh, Puiman, Puiman Law, sorry. She's a, um, I believe a Hawaiian artist. She's the artist for the deck. And I absolutely love this deck. Okay, so March. March is going to be kind of looking at our sentimentality. See how this woman is lost inside that bowl? And she's not even noticing that her other bowls are tipping over, are discarded, some are even washing away from her because she's completely absorbed in this one piece. So this is going to be, I'm guessing that March is going to be a time where we're really going to have to go in and do some deep introspective work and have to let go of some external things. So perhaps big project work will be happening in March. April is going to be a community time. This is the Three of Cups. That's always symbolizing a new community, a strong sisterhood, support, perhaps some of us will be coming together. Maybe we should plan some sort of women's retreat in April or something. But this is a community card. May, we've got the moon. The moon is a major arcana card. So when the majors show up, those are life lessons, big life lessons. And the moon is about removing the masks. See how she's taking off the mask, but she also still has a mask on. Uh, February is feeling cast out. But it's really about taking yourself away from this internal community, the church, to come out into your own space for a time. It can feel lonely as long as that, that is something you need to work on, the, the loneliness feeling. But for some, that's not such a lonely feeling. Some, it's a good feeling. Okay, so uh, the moon. So it's going to be about looking at what kind of masks do we put on, even for ourselves, really evaluating and examining these filters of perception that we use. It's funny because, you know, there's all these fairies around her in this card. Uh, there, it's, let's see if we can see that. So like, if you could see the expression on the fairy's face, she's kind of a little bit shocked that the mask has come off. And some others are like, mm, I don't know if you're really looking. It's very interesting, this card, actually. All of the cards are like that. This is why I love the stack. Um, yeah, so that was May. Let's see. January, February, March, April, May, June. So June is the Page of Swords. Now, the Page of Swords, she's basically like the princess kind of a card. Um, she is a young regal with all of the grace and dignity of a regal without any of the responsibility yet to weigh her down. Uh, the Page of Swords is going to be very intellectual. So let me feel into this because this could be read a few different ways. We are going to be, as a collective, working on what is it that prevents us from feeling comfort in our intellectual uh, thoughts and processes. We, uh, this is inverted, so it's a struggle right now. Uh, so that's going to look like in May, really confronting our uh, maladaptive thought processes that take us down roads uh, that make us feel weighted down or like we're falling instead of carried up. So it's going to be a thought process is shifting time. May, June. Is that right? Oh, the name of the card for February is the Five of Pentacles. And 
February, March, April is the Three of Cups. So let's see, we've got uh, January is the Three of Wands. Notice there's a lot of threes here. Um, five of Pentacles is February. Five of Cups is March. Three of Cups is April. May is the Moon. June is the Page of Swords. Um, and also, this Page of Swords energy is going to be, so that's the youthful energy. Um, so she's, she, it's, it's going to help us look back at where in our youth we started forming the maladaptive thought processes. Uh, June. So June is the Six of Swords. Now, it's interesting, she is very similar to this in a sense, that it's being carried up and released from this battlefield. Uh, she's being released from the battlefield and carried and supported away and given that rest that she needs so badly. So in June, we're going to be dealing, and this is inverted, so I think that many of us, and I know for myself, I could be projecting, but many of us struggle with receiving support, especially when we believe ourselves to be the giver of support. So this is this is going to be working on how do we really deal with this way that we feel unsupported uh, by those around us. <coughs> July is the Seven of Wands. Now the Seven of Wands, as as it as it illustrates clearly in the image, is about defending oneself, defending one's family, defending one's ideas, their values. And the wands are all passion, right? They're fire, they're energy, they're um, transmutation as well. So we are going to, this is again inverted. So a lot of these are inverted. So it's kind of like how I look at that is that um, it's about releasing that which creates this block, right? So if we are in a dynamic where we're fighting a lot and having to defend ourselves a lot, this is going to be looking at that and, and really releasing those thoughts that identify and make us feel like we have to fight. And after July, we're going to move into August. And, you know, if, if it's in any keeping with the messages that I've been getting about kind of the destructurization of our culture and some value systems that are going on, um, these cards are falling in line with that timeline as well. Uh, okay, so um, where were we at? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. August is the fighting, dealing with fighting and defending. Um, August, September is the Ten of Swords. So notice how a lot of these are swords or cups. Mostly that's what we're getting, are swords and cups. So subconscious thinking, emotions, a lot of that stuff's gonna be coming to the surface. Thought processes, that's what we're gonna be working on a lot next year. Um, so September, Ten of Swords. Now this, is, this woman is, um, She's not imagining being under attack. She actually is under attack. Now, this the card right before it shows all of these crows swirling above. Okay, so January is the Three of Wands. January, February is the Five of Pentacles. March, Five of Cups. April, Three of Cups, May, the Moon, June. Ah, that's where I got messed up. Thank you for correcting me there, Alex. So, June is the Page of Swords. July is the Six of Swords. August is the Seven of Wands. September is the Ten of Swords. So, that the September time, she doesn't, she's not imagining that she's being attacked. She actually is under attack. It's inverted. So we really are going to be letting go and releasing all those things that keep us in a dynamic where we're under attack. You know, we're with this coming up from the battlefield, facing what made us feel like we had to defend and fight, facing what feels like we're being attacked. So then we come into October. October is the Eight of Cups, and this is righted, right? So the Eight of Cups is all about 
letting go of what's going on at the surface, letting go of that external realm, diving into the deep depths of the self, going in and going on a self-exploration journey. Notice that she has this little star with her as well as a vessel of her energy. The star is guiding her, letting her own light guide her. So in turning away from the external light, October, November, November is the Six of uh, Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles, it's inverted. So if this were the other way, I would say we're going to be looking at oh, where's the money going? How are we using the money? How is the money being spent? But this is, in, and it usually implies that the money is kind of flowing away from us. Um, so inverted actually is quite good. It's showing that now things are going to flow better. The money is going to flow towards us instead of away and out. And, and we're going to learn how do we use the money? How do we spend our money? And, and, and what is the resource of it for? And, and really, how is that working? So there's going to be a lot of money issues coming up in November. And the last month of next year is December, the Page of Cups. So again, she's inverted just like the Page of Swords. And the Page of Cups is all about, um, <clears throat> you know, she's where, let's see, over here, what was that, uh, March? When we're in the Five of Cups, she's lost in that singular idea, lost in that one focus. Here, she's in a state of sentimental practice, looking back and reviewing, really connecting in with what she is seeing. It's a different sense. This one, the woman is on the rocks and she doesn't, she's not really noticing her surroundings or caring, whereas this one has created a space to do so. Now it is inverted, so perhaps it's time to look at what keeps us in this space or what prevents us from going into this space. It's going to be about looking how we look back and review. So that's my year in review spread. There's one more card that we can do for this, which is looking at the shadow aspect of the year, which we're gonna be facing. <laughs> that's hilarious. And it's the death card. Uh, one of the things I love about this deck is the way that it um, frames the messages. So the death card in this deck is the Phoenix. This year is going to be about burning away. You know, last year was a lot of struggle, a lot of strife. You know, 2016 was about um, everything just kind of breaking down that's not working and doesn't serve us. So it looks like this coming year is going to be about facing the belief systems that created those systems in the first place and really understanding what's going on underneath it and letting ourselves rebirth our new self free of all of the attachments of that old life free of that system that we were engaged in before so let's burn ladies and gentlemen let's burn <laughs> all right that was the spread i hope you like it i'm going to turn off this light because that's so bright oh much better all right i hope you guys like that <laughs> Um, and Alex, did you get all of those written down? Because you're going to remind us through the year, right, as we go? Because <laughs> you're good at that. Um, so today, we, um, <clears throat> we're going to kind of move right into the meditation work today. Um, it's... As we, as we talked about yesterday, this new moon is called the Stardust Moon, um, all, there, all the is moon, uh, the time of coming into wholeness with the self. We have been doing uh, work on that, prepping us to get us to this place and ready for it for days now. Um, I always love when, <laughs> when you step into the flow and allow the guidance to just create your meditations, to create your practice, which is what I, I try to do. That's kind of how I try to shape and form my life, is by that flow. Um, but when you do so, you don't always know why you're doing something. You don't know understand that there's, there's a greater plan at play until you get to those few days down the road and you're like, oh, 
oh, that's why you wanted me to have that meditation. We were connecting on a root level and, and feeling each other. Oh, oh, that's why you wanted me to have that meditation of where I'm calling in all of myself. Oh, good, Alex. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see what you, you come up with too. Make sure to post pictures of it on the, on the Facebook group. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> we are, where was I? The, with the moon energy, with this new energy coming in of, of coming into self, I had no idea, honestly, I didn't look that far ahead, that that's what we were going to be coming up to next, that that was kind of where we were headed with all of these meditations. I just allow the meditations to be what they are, you know, to just come through as they come through, to do whatever it is that's coming through to, to do. Um, but it all has prepped us for today. All of those things that we've done before. So if you have missed some of the shows and you haven't had those meditations, that's totally okay. It's perfect. You may not have needed those parts. But for me, who's gone through every single one of them, I'm like, oh, no wonder we've been doing all of that. <laughs> no wonder this is what's what this has led us up to. So, um, oh, before I do that, because I don't want to bring it up at the end, when it's meditation and you guys are just in that space. If you haven't heard, there's a new um, interview with me uh, that's available. You can see it on our website. I put it up on the home page so it's easy to find. Uh, I was interviewed by um, Powell on the spiritual voice and you know it's it's fun. <laughs> it's a fun little interview and um, I'm excited. So there's that and tonight we're doing Psychic Wednesday and then also, you know, I don't know if you've had a chance, but you can look on our website. We have um, a lot of people ask me all the time, actually, what do you do? Like, how, how would I work with you? What would that look like? Um, and even, honestly, this Morning Oasis program isn't really how I work, right? If you've done session work with me, you know that it's a little bit different than this, but it is similar. Uh, so what we did was we just put up a bunch of, here, look, these are some attunements that you can get with us. If you want to just feel the energy or work with us and us have us use our talents, us being Shauna or myself, we each offer kind of different things. Um, attuning energies are us helping you connect into that strand of energy that we are comfortable and familiar with. So we bring that strand down and help you form that connection to it. And then you move forward using that strand and it guides you if, um, if, if you want to do that on a solo basis. So those attunement sessions are kind of the, the most simple, you sit there, we channel energy, uh, mm -hmm. very uh, traditional kind of way of energy work being done. And then we go into readings and sessions, and in those we offer, you know, more instruction or go more in depth in, in whatever it is that's happening. For me, my sessions always include instruction. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't like to just channel energy. I, I mean, it's, it's beautiful and I love that. But I would much rather ha teach you how to channel the energy and how to call in that attunement and how to change the frequency. So that's all on the website. It's all in there and um, under our classes and readings and more if you want to try to, um, if you were interested in that at all. And also our classes are up there. Um, we have recorded classes and live classes. So that all said, um, I'm doing my businesswoman duty. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into the meditation now. Uh, I want to start <coughs> calling our focus and energy around this idea <coughs> of calling our whole selves in. We often leave little pieces of ourselves here and there because we're marking something, we're remembering something, something has been taken from us. We feel broken and we leave something behind. We decide this is no longer suiting us and we carve it away. We've left behind ourselves. We also are existing across multiple expressions, multiple timelines. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, those timelines have been merging, especially ones that are in any way similar to this timeline. I'm having all kinds of experiences along the merging of the timelines. 
two different thoughts, two different memories, two different perspectives in conflict. Not sure which one is the reality. Everyone else around me is understanding or remembering and recognizing as soon as I remember and understand, it doesn't matter. Right? But all of that is this process of coming into oneness, wholeness. That also means in some expressions where we're really different, those are also coming into wholeness. So we're starting to have these you know, thoughts and feelings and emotions that feel very different to us, but it's bringing all of these extremes into this whole space. And that's what we're gonna work on in today's meditation. I really need it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I really need it. So go ahead and make sure you're comfortable. If you need to take a sip of anything, go ahead. I'm going to take some smiling coffee. And let's go ahead and check our body postures. <sighs> Take a few deep clearing breaths, coming into this space, into the now. Allowing that breath to come deeper into the body as we breathe into that abdomen space. And release from there. Breathing now down into the root. Opening that root up and relaxing it and releasing. Whenever I start feeling my roots growing down, I need to move my ankles around and get a little pops. Oh, yeah, neither have I, Andrea. No full night's sleeps either. Been very hard to sleep. Now, as you breathe in, I want you to breathe in this present moment, feeling the air coming in, the temperature, the smell. Just breathing in the here and the now. And as you exhale, let go, unhook from the day, unhook from everything you have waiting for you. Just know it'll be there, just let it go. Breathing in this present moment. And as you release, unhook and release from those things that hold us in the past, that take us back. And breathing in this present moment all the way into the root. And as you exhale, releasing your expectations of yourself at this moment, at this time. Go ahead and feel that tree around you that you've been carrying with you and keeping grounded in. Yeah, Shauna, it's been hard to sleep. Feel that tree wrapping around you and holding you. Just 
supporting us right now. Feel those roots growing down and twining with our tree, reaching deeper and wider. Send those roots out even wider as we ground beyond just Gaia, beyond just this piece in the creation, out through the layers of energy and density expressions. Continue sending those roots and reach for the moon that is in its newest phase reflecting almost nothing back at us, allowing us to see it instead of the reflection. Ground also into the moon. I see a great big figure eight of our roots reaching for the moon and wrapping around and coming back and wrapping around, coming through us and reaching just feel that grounded connection into this supportive lunar energy. As we bring that energy up through the body, I can feel it's already in our seats, already quickly coming up through the abdomen, rising very quickly, up through the shoulders, heart, arms. <sighs> up through the throat and neck, joining that back energy and up in the head. Feeling that crown opening up and receiving that light from source. Allowing Source to flow its consciousness down through us, and as it does so, as it flows into us, it's helping us to release anything that makes us feel separate from it, any beliefs, any ideas, any understandings, just bringing in that Source consciousness, flowing it down. Let it fill up that heart space and breathe and expand it a little more. that energy to pool in our seed and fill that root space where we feel so depleted right now, so many of us. Fill that root space with this source awareness of safety and comfort, wholeness and acceptance. As we allow that energy to flow down the roots and down our legs, I want you to bring your focus back up to your crown. And I want you to imagine that your crown is one strand that's you coming up and going up and connecting in to that source. But when you connect in, you're not all the way up into source. I want you to feel where you're connecting to another strand of you. 
until you feel those two come together. And allow yourself to travel down this other strand for a little while and see the difference of this other self, this other expression. Maybe this you is dealing with a different set of problems. Maybe she has a different set of assets. Just explore and allow. And now, as you're exploring that strand, bring it in to yours. We're coming into wholeness. They're all connected. Bringing that strand in to yours and twining them together, allowing them to be connected. And go up and find another strand of you. Get familiar with this process of traveling up and finding another expression where you've connected and looking at how this strand came apart. And as you explore it, bring it in to this one. By coming into wholeness, releasing our focus on the separation of ourselves, we come more in alignment with what we came here to do, which is to transition beyond this expression, this three-dimensional expression. We've got to be whole to come up and through that, to have that whole self, to be able to move forward. This is what activating that light body is, that whole body self the rainbow body, every strand of color represented, all of the self. Continue seeking other strands of self and bringing them in and allowing them to braid in that expression that is you. If you need to Trace all the way back up into source, where you divided from source. And go from there, twining, bringing in together all these pieces of you that divided away. We're going to use the whole self moving forward. As you're doing this, you're probably having ideas, thoughts, memories, maybe random statements popping up in your head. You might also be experiencing some physiological symptoms. Maybe one of these expressions has a pain you don't. Just allow and observe all of these things to show you what they are, to show you what's happening. Allow and observe. And ignore my son blowing his nose upstairs, if you can hear that. He has a cold. Feel how already your energy is feeling thicker, stronger. Notice how the light around me has shifted from that blue iridescent light into a more golden color. Shifting a little bit back when I call it into focus, but feeling that wholeness brings in a different tone of light, a different color spectrum. 
bring those energies. Imagine this rainbow of you with all expressions is just pouring into you. And you are getting bigger and stronger and fuller of you coming into that whole self, bringing all the strands down through the chakras, through the system, all the way through to your roots and sending that down and out. Go ahead and continue flowing this rainbow energy through the body. And as you do so, as you flow this energy through, I want you to imagine that you have a little blue pearl. It can also be rainbow, it can be any color you want. Mine's blue. This little blue pearl. Imagine you have one in your heart chakra, and from it all the rainbow colors are going in, swirling into this heart chakra space. And imagine you have a pearl in your third eye, right in the top of your head, right at your pineal gland. And that pearl is radiating out all this rainbow energy. In this field, you're creating your own rainbow toroidal field through these two chakras. Allow them to radiate that energy out. Thank you, Nicole. And let's just sit in this space as we receive and project our rainbow light bodies. And feel your rainbow swirling body of light expand. Pull more of that source and Gaia energy in and expand even greater. Flex and expand that energy, your field, out as far as you can, pulling in as much as you need to. Let yourself go big as big as you can get, even if that means you're as big as the universe. In this moment, you are the universe. Expand and feel the wholeness of you. As you breathe in and then release, when you release that breath, I want you to relax the field and let it come back into what is comfortable, what is natural for you. Relax. Now as you breathe in again, I want you to expand that field again out as far as you can, as wide as you can. And any thoughts or feelings about this that make you feel uncomfortable or unhappy or even overly excited, just allow and observe as you expand. This time, as you're expanding, I want you to feel your field 
going over the other people that are in your creation and recognizing these are all you too. Expand and incorporate them into your energy. Spreading that out, knowing this is your creation. Expand. Breathing in a good deep breath. And as you breathe out, release and come back into what is natural. We're going to do one last expansion and contraction so that we are comfortable with this process, so that we know to our core that this process, that we are everything. Everything around us is us, showing us ourselves, even the dark. Go ahead and breathe in and expand the field. You can stay in this state for as long as you like. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for witnessing with me today. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And I will post pictures of my new moon space, intention space, in a little while. Much love to you.